Hello and welcome to Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie and I'd like to welcome you to episode number 27 of Doodle Gems. In this episode we are going to be doing Lorimar. It is a really pretty gem that has white lines going through it that look like the cracks in an eggshell or the back of a turtle. So why don't you come with me and find out how easy this really is. Okay guys, thank you so much for coming along with me. And to start us off, I'm gonna show you the colors we're using for this particular gem. It's going to be a very limited palette again. This time, we are using just the Indigo Aquamarine True Blue Light Cerulean White and the Colorless Blender for Prismacolor. Now, if you don't have Prismacolor and you want to use Crayola, I would suggest grabbing your navy, turquoise, sky blue, light blue, and the white. But remember, I always recommend, even if you have no other Prismacolors, get yourself a white Prismacolor and the Prismacolor Colorless Blender. They will make your life so much easier. Let's get started. This time, I am going to draw this little circle-ish shape. And I am going to put in very, very lightly with this pencil, which is the light cerulean blue, some sort of random lines going around here and I'm just drawing sort of a rough circle-ish shape and not really putting petals but kind of shapes that could be kind of seen like petals kind of like a little kid's drawing of a flower. Look at that. It looks really uh, kind of random, doesn't it? And that's one of the things about this is that it is very random in the, the placement of where the lines go. And this, let's see. The lines are not even just straight lines. You've got some, some lines that are sort of straight and some lines that sort of wander around in a roundish kind of shape. And they don't even really st like stained glass, like the uh, stained glass window shapes. Some of it looks sort of stained glass window shape and some of it is just weird. <laughs> Some of it is just weird. And that's okay. That is so okay. Right, so now we've got these lines and I just want to put some skinny little white lines near. Just pick either the inside of your white, inside of your blue lines or the outside of your blue lines. Don't draw it on both sides. Don't draw it on both sides of your, your lines. You want to try to keep them kind of skinny. You don't, you don't really want them to end up being super fat lines. It's kind of prettier when the lines look actually more like cracks to my mind. The way the way I see it around the outside on that one but it's going to be the inside of this one it's going to be the inside of that one and there and then this one has just a little bit there now you're going um yeah right there and there and here and there and everywhere but there you go from this angle, you can sort of see where all of the white lines went. And 
And what I'm do the reason why I'm putting the white lines is that they act kind of like a resist. They act kind of like a resist. And yeah, I think that's what that's exactly what I'm going to do. It's just that much. Then I'm going to take this blue and I am going to go and drop it in to all of those little areas, all the little areas, the little puzzle pieces. Because that's what they feel like. They feel like little puzzle pieces to me. Or like a crazy quilt. Kind of cool like that. Kind of cool like a crazy quilt. So Laramar is that is a type of stone that can only be found in the Dominican Republic. It's a rare form of a pectolite, P-E-C-T-O-L-I-T-E, um, which is actually, the pectolite isn't rare. It can be found all over the world. But the blue kind is only found in the Dominican Republic. I thought that was kind of interesting. And it's a, it's a type of volcanic stone or made because of a volcano in certain types of rocks that ended up with voids in them that were filled with water and minerals. And over the millennia, the water and minerals make really pretty gems. And because these gems or these stones had a lot of copper in them, they went blue, where in most parts of the world, it, that's not the case. It's made with calcium. And I don't even know what color they are for the other ones. These are all kinds of colors of blue, different colors of blue. And they can be from pure white or almost pure white to a deep blue. And this one is getting kind of a medium blue uh, tone. And right now what I'm using is the true blue. Before I was using the light cerulean blue. And here, these sort of little junctions, I'm going between those white lines and I'm sort of starting to layer in these colors to give it, it's not, this is a smooth stone. It's not an in and out type of stone, but right now I'm laying these colors down so it feels almost in and out. it's going to have sort of a glossiness over it. So those, those ins and outs are just different tones of color deep in the stone, kind of like a stained glass window. And I'm just working my way around the stone, filling in. Some of them are getting filled in much more than others. I don't mind if I go over the white a little bit. As long as I leave at least some margin between, I'm good. Some of these are going to be skinnier spaces. Some of them are going to be fatter spaces. It's okay. So I guess this stone has been discovered twice first time it was discovered like in the early 1900s and it was a priest who had found it and had asked if he could set up a mine to mine it and his request had been denied so it hadn't been mined hadn't been brought out into the brought out into the uh, public eye. And then in 1974, there was a guy who was in the Dominican Republic 
who had found this really pretty blue stone on the beach. And he asked the locals what the stone was called, and they just said blue stone. And so he did some more research and found that nobody was mining this stone. And he found a deposit of it and was granted permission to have the mine. And he named the stone after his daughter, Larissa. So that's where the Lari, L-A-R-I, comes from. And then Mar, which is the sea. And he named it that because the locals said, well, it comes from the sea. So he said, all right, he named it Larimar. I thought that was interesting. Then there's other names that you can find it under. There's uh, Atlantis Stone is another name that you would find this under. Or um, Dolphin Stone. Now I'm, oh, and I had brought, I had picked, sorry, I had picked up the Aquamarine and had just put a few spots of Aquamarine in here a little bit of a greenish tone to it. And now I'm coming in with the indigo. And you notice I have not done my blending yet. I'm going to grab the colorless blender to do the blending. But I'm just trying to work some of these colors in. I'm going to try and keep that really dark color sort of around the bottom edge as if the stone is, you know, three-dimensional and coming up and curving over. We're going to keep doing it in this zoomed-in frame for for now until this till the gem part is done and then I'll zoom back out when we're doing the doodle. Now I'm not putting a lot of the indigo deep, you know, higher up, a little bit here and there, but not a lot. So now grab that colorless blender and I'm going to start here in the middle and work my way around, just blending the stone. The neat thing is, even though you have these white lines between things, the the lines are kind of blurred they're soft so and sometimes the line completely disappears and that's okay because even on the real stones when you do a search for larimar you'll see that there's a lot of blurring going on along those lines there we go So pecolite is a type of silica, which is basically a sand, or like silicon, a silicate, I guess. And there's a lot of different kinds of stones out there that are silica. But this is the only blue of this type of stone. But it can be many different colors of blue, which makes it nice when you're doing it from a for a colored pencil drawing. It's not something that has to be exactly a particular color of blue. It's not sapphire blue that you're trying to make sapphire blue. This you can fudge your colors along. Just sort of get them to do something pretty and pleasing. And if you look here, while I'm, while I'm using this colorless blender, I'm just sort of blending across those lines that were there, going down all the way to the edge. Get 
get that shadowy line going around the edge. You know, it's not, uh, it's not rocket science, folks. This is just doodling and it's fun. And now I'm going to grab that white again. And a few of these lines I want to sort of darken up a little bit, bring back a little bit. This is not something that follows rules. At least I haven't found any rules for it. I kind of like the lines to end up having a little bit of sort of a fluid form to them. They kind of go in and out and around. They don't have to. You could actually do this very angular. They don't have to be They don't have to be done in a smooth, um, rounded way. They can be very angular. Now I'm just putting in some lines to start making kind of a gloss feel to it. And I am going to do the white uniball pen because you know I like my white uniball pen. All right. And it is really interesting. It still looks kind of like a hot mess. But when you start putting in, let's see, I, which way do I want it to be up? I want that way up, this way up. I think I do. I just want this way up. So now I'm going to, on a piece of paper, I'm just going to sketch sketchy draw. I'm going to scribble. That's what it is. Scribble. Scribble my pen. And I'm going to give it a little bit of a high shine. And just some really light thin lines for this shine going around it there. And I think I want to, to land in here with a little bit more of this deeper blue in just a few spots. Look at the, oh yeah, that's what it needed. It needed just a little more depth little more depth. Liking that a lot. Just a bit more. Just gives it a little something something going on. There we are. And a little more dark right around the bottom. Ooh, that's pretty. I'm liking this. And I'm just taking that colorless blender just to blend that down like you do. You just want to blend it in. There you go. And now you're going, yeah, okay, it's sort of, sort of cool. But just wait. Just wait. When we do the doodle, that is going to be so special looking. All right, some of you have may maybe have already seen something similar to what I'm going to do right now. I did one. I love the setting, so I'm going to just 
try and not exactly replicate it, but get kind of an idea of it, a close approximation. Like I was saying, some of you have already seen it on my Instagram and uh, on my Facebook for the one that I'm kind of doing here. So I'm going to start off here and do a big circle and a big circle. I'm going to break this up into mm, probably eight. So I'll do, I've got these like 12 o'clock, three o'clock, six o'clock, nine o'clock. And then, but then I'm going to break into the middle of those. So it's not exactly, it's not exactly two. It's just halfway between and halfway between all the way around. Just, and remember, halfway is relative. I am not using any type of measuring tools here. And then we're going to go with sort of a little crescent shape between each of those circles. Remember your doodle does not have to look just like mine. Your doodle can go off into a whole nother world. It does not have to be exactly like this. I am just making the doodle up as I go along and going, hmm, I think I'm going to do something like this and like that. So one going down one going this way, and then one like that. Okay, so I, I'm figuring this out as I'm going along here, guys. So we've got sort of a leaf shape laying along the crescent. We have another leaf shape laying up on top of the first one. And between those two leaf shapes, we have another one coming out the top. So it's like it's growing out. So we're doing, and these leaf shapes are all coming from the base of a circle. Like that. Oh, that's looking pretty. That is working itself out here. So this one is not going to be exactly like the other one because I'm not a copy machine. I make something that's similar maybe, but it's not, it's not perfectly exact and that's okay. I like having variety in my life. And one more, there, there, and off that center point like that. Let's see here. Let's see here. Let's go with off of the, so between the long, the long leafy shape and that sort of heart down here, coming out of that one, I'm going to swing around with a swirly. And what I'm doing is I'm starting at the base of that top leaf and swinging out to the left and coming around in a swirl pattern and then just following it back out. So I'm going to do that again, up, swinging to the left, a swirl, and back. And I'm going to do that all the way around, out to the left, swirl, and back. So you see how all of these leaves were going to the right, going clockwise. 
And now these are going to the left, these swirls, and it balances this stone. And you notice how pretty this is looking with the setting going on. It's really setting off that gem and making it stand out even more. So we're going to go swirl off to the left and back and swirl off to the left and then back. And then we're going to do just a few little details and this will be done. See how quick and easy that was. So what I'm going to do is go in and give these little leafy shapes a line with a couple dots off the top. Line with a couple dots. Line dot dot. Line dot dot. It just makes them look a little more finished. And I sort of have these little lines going off in the direction from the center point out towards the tip, but leaving a little space, but going the direction of the leaf. So if the leaf is tipping to the right, I'm going to make sure that that line tips to the right. If the leaf tips to the left, it will tip, the middle line will tip to the left because it's like how the leaf would be growing. And we're already back around to the beginning of that one. Look at that. Okay, and I think that maybe I'm going to go ahead and color in these swirls. Not completely color, leaving a bit of white here and there so it looks like it's shiny. It looks shiny that way. Did you ever notice that? That if you leave just a little spot of white, it makes it look shiny. And if you leave those spots on a bend, it makes it feel even more shiny because it's reaching out. It's the going out and away. So it feels shinier things on the upside of something being left a little bit white just gives you that feeling of shine and even though these little guys are these swirl points are all the way into the center I'm leaving those with a bit of a white spot on them Just a little bit of white here and there. And we are getting closer and closer to being done. Every little bit takes us closer. I think I will take a gray pencil in on those circles. Or maybe a light blue. I think it's going to be a light blue pencil because I don't have a gray pencil with me. So we're going to take this bright blue and just use it to give a shadow and leaving the white highlight. Just working this in in a sort of C shape. Just a little bit just a little bit. It doesn't take a lot to make it feel like it's a little round ball. And this time, these little round balls are going to feel more like little gems. So look at that. I think a tiny bit of the blue right down in, whoops, between the gem and the bezel. Look at that. 
Ooh. That just gives it a little bit of a lift. A little bit of a lift. We don't have to do a lot. Look at that. There. That's all it took. All right, friends. If you like this, please click like, subscribe, so you'll find out when next video comes up, and share this video with your friends. Please comment, let me know what you thought, and share this video with your friends so they can find out what all the fun is about. And as always, go out and do something creative. Take care.